Hi, this is Eric with Cat Avenue. Today we're going to be talking more about object snaps. Uh, in the previous video we went over the line command and uh, today I'm going to just do uh, a couple of more piping examples and then showing you how to use the object snap with that. I was going to hold off on the 3D stuff but I was thinking well why not just go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to show you how to um, get into the 3D view mode here. You just click on this top, I should say top in your uh, view, and then come down to Southwest Isometric. And that's going to put you into a 3D view. And I'm going to go ahead and load up the piping tools, ortho piping, and then make sure the 3D here is, is selected. And in today's video, I'm going to be using, let's say, a 12-inch uh, butt welded carbon steel and I'm going to select the straight piece here, select view draw, and then I'm going to enter a point here in my uh, uh, model space window. And again, I have the polar tracking activated down here, and so it's snapping to every 45 degrees. That's the way I have it set right now. In the previous video, I showed you how to change that, uh, but uh, let's go ahead and just put a piece of pipe in here using direct distance like I was showing you in the last video and we'll go over 20 feet and then we're going to come down this way 20 feet and we're going to press enter because we're ending the pipe run and now we have an L-shaped pipe uh, with an elbow here that it's automatically inserted um, so just like the 2D, it does automatically put in those elbows for you. The reason why I drew this 3D object was I wanted to show you a little bit about object snaps and how important they are in both 2D and 3D. So let's go down here to where the object snap icon is here. Right click and go to eSnap. In AviCAD it's actually called eSnap, not OSnap. Uh, so there's a little minor difference there uh, as compared to AutoCAD. And we're going to click on eSnap uh, settings. And then we're going to make sure that we have Node selected here. Node is important to have turned on when you're snapping uh, to the center of the pipe. So I have that selected. I'm going to go ahead and zoom down on this piece here using my, the scroll wheel on my mouse. I'm going to snap to the node. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select the elbow, view draw. I'm going to pick the elbow from this point here because these X marks are actually clickable. I want to insert it from the center of the uh, this elbow. And now you can see, if you look closely, you can see the last point that I entered because that's shown in like a light gray dashed but if I hover over it you'll be able to see that I'm actually hovering over the center of this pipe here the node and the center are essentially the same but in some situations you will only have the node so that's why the node is a good idea to have uh, turned on so I'm gonna pick the point here with the left button on my mouse and then I'm going to go ahead and rotate this up and then left click again. So if I have, let's say, the center turned off, come down here, left click and turn off the center. And then put another uh, piece of pipe here. You can see the last point there until I actually zoomed out of it. And now I'm actually, you see how it's highlighted the node? It's actually found that node there. So I can continue upwards. If we're going upwards in a straight Z direction, in other words, we're looking down here at this UCS indicator and we're seeing the Z going this direction. This would mean that the ortho needs to be turned on. 
And the reason why that is, is because if the ortho isn't turned on, sometimes you're going to get a skewed piece of pipe, even though it may look like the pipe is basically going straight up. It's really not. So the only way that's going to work is if we have our ortho uh, mode turned on. Let's just go up one feet here. Down here you have your UCS indicator. And you can see the Z is pointing straight up. Um, and the X is pointing this way and the Y is pointing this way. Well, this is the world coordinate system. This is telling us that our Z direction and our X and Y direction are all pointing the way they should. If you are uh, drawing a piece of pipe and you're noticing something weird, it's like coming out in a weird angle, make sure you check this first and make sure that this is set to what's called the world UCS. And so the way we check that is we type in UCS and we type W for world and that straightens that icon out if it gets skewed. But getting back to the object snaps again, if we're working just by putting pipe in the uh, center and the node, turning those two snap modes on is highly recommended otherwise you're going to get into problems. The next thing I wanted to cover was moving an object. Let's go ahead and turn on our um, polar tracking mode again because we're going to be moving things around we want to make sure that they're moving on the correct axis let's go ahead and draw a T in pick this one here new draw I'm going to pick it from this point here and I'm just going to put a point out here in space I'm going to show you how I move this T I'll pick the upstream direction, which would be this one. And then I rotate it as needed here. Okay. So now we got the T in there, but the T, of course, is not in the right location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to move this from here to here. So you pick it. And if you see the little nodes down there, the little uh, blue nodes, that's basically telling you that you can snap to that node, like I'm doing here, just hovering over it. And because I have my center snap turned on, it automatically uh, snaps to that area. So we left click, and then we can bring this down to the center here. You see how I'm highlighting over the center of this piece of pipe here? And we just click again. And that was actually the node down there. but. Uh, so I just wanted to show you that because um, that's kind of a common thing you're going to have to learn is how to move these fittings around in case they get mis-inputted. Uh, you're always going to need to know how to move things around. One last thing I wanted to show you was by picking the part and then snapping to this and then pressing the space bar as long as you've got the node highlighted you automatically get that move command just by pressing the space bar. If we cycle through the next command, that's a rotate command, which is rotating this around here. Again, we're using the, um, the polar snap as we established earlier. So we can rotate it. If we pick it again from here and we press the space bar, we can scale it. So here we could make that bigger. If we press the space bar again, we're now we're into mirror mode. You can see it mirroring around. And then a stretch mode. But the stretch mode and the move are the same in this uh, situation because we're dealing with a block. And blocks cannot be stretched unless they are exploded. Anyways, uh, so I wanted to show you that space bar command because that works well in 2D as well as 3D. Why don't we go ahead and just go into 2D real quick, erase these. Again, I'm picking up from lower right to upper left and that picks everything in the crossing. And then I'm typing E for erase. So let's go back into a different view, which is the top view. 
Watch what happened to the cursor there. Now we've lost the Z because we're no longer in uh, 3D space. Go ahead and erase this up here as well. So let me give you some examples in 2D um, why you would need object snap. So in 2D we have the line command, which I showed you. If we go up um, 30 feet and we come over 20 feet Let me show you another trick that we can use in 2D in this situation. Uh, we can come down and we can make sure that this is turned on. This is called Entity Snap Tracking. Right now it's turned on, so make sure this is turned on. If it's not, and then right click here and we're going to turn on the midpoint object snap. I'm going to draw a line using the L command. I'm going to snap to the end here. We're going to come down halfway and not really snap, but hover over. So I'm not doing anything to my mouse except hovering over it. And now that I've, I'm highlighted over that, if I just hold it there just for a couple seconds, you can see like a little um, square there. And then as I bring this back, I'm not doing any drawing at all where I'm just hovering. Uh, you can see that it has drawn a temporary construction line uh, where the midpoint of that other line is and then projected that green dash line out. So I know if I left click at this point, I'm going to have a line that's exactly halfway down this line. Well, let's try this again. So let's come over, I don't know, 10 feet. And let's let's draw another line going up this way, half the distance. And so we just come over, we hover over it just a little bit for just a second or two, and then we come over and left click. So that comes in handy, especially in 2D. Uh, you can do um, yeah a lot of um, drawing this way without having to create construction lines or do any math, for example. Just turn off all the snaps here, just for this example. So right now, if I hover over anything, like the line command, it's not going to want to snap to anything, endpoints or anything. But if I shift and then left click, I can pick the endpoint here just on the fly. So I can come down and do this. But that only activates at one time. So if I shift left click again, I can select this one. So that comes in handy when you don't have a snap turned on and you don't want to go into the menu, but you only need that snap temporarily, uh, which is handy. Just lastly, one last thing I'm going to show you. I know I've shown you quite a bit uh, here, but there is a toolbar that you can turn on and if you hover over the ribbon here and you right click and you choose toolbars and then you come down and, and select PCAD and come down and look for object snap turn this on now we have a menu that shows nothing but object snaps um, we can move that up here temporarily if you wanted to, I suppose. Here, you can see there are no snaps activated. But if we come down and we go into our snap menu here, turn on endpoint, you can see that it's highlighted. The endpoint is being active. And this way you can visually see your snaps instead of having to go into the menu down here. A lot of people like working this way, but you can see there's several of these that you can toggle off and on. Perpendicular snap is a useful one. Um, if, uh, let's say if I have a line here and I wanna make sure that I'm perpendicular to this line, we see the little L command here? That's saying I'm perpendicular. Next to perpendicular snap, oh, there's um, intersection snap, which is a, uh, a widely used setting. If I have a line going through a line, and I want to draw a line 
Let's just turn this on. See where the X is, and then it says intersection. That's basically snapping to the intersection of those two lines that cross each other. Here's where the node snap is that I showed you earlier for 3D. This comes in handy. So some of those are some of the more popular ones. Uh, but I wanted to show you how to activate those toolbars as well. Uh, you can get into activating other toolbars just the same way by right clicking on this menu, coming to toolbars, and then going into the PCAD menu here. So hopefully this has been helpful and feel free to reach out and call me at 888-271-7121. Thanks and have a great day.